The Lincoln Rail Splitter football team was looking for its fifth win Friday night to become playoff eligible for the second year in a row. Their opponents? The Quincy Notre Dame Raiders, ranked number three in the most recent Associated Press Class 2A poll. Both teams took a little while to get anything going. Much of the credit goes to both defenses for that. But finally, at the 325 mark, QND's Wyatt Mueller broke the shutout up with a one-yard touchdown run on the quarterback keeper. The PAT made the score 7-0. Lincoln, however, hung tough. Here's a 30-yard pass play from Tate Johnston to Kyle Keeler for a first down. Then it's Peyton Bunner with a 12-yard run for Lincoln. The rail splitters couldn't get it in the end zone in the first period, though, so it's 7-0 going into the second quarter. It wouldn't stay that way for long, however, as Lincoln punts on its first play of the quarter, and once again it's Wyatt Mueller finding the end zone for Quincy Notre Dame, this time on an impressive 82-yard punt return. That puts Quincy Notre Dame up 14-0. But, as they have all season, Lincoln showed it never gives up. Here's Johnston and Keeler connecting on a six-yard pass play, but LCHS was doing it on the defensive side of the ball also. This pass looked like it was going for a Quincy Notre Dame touchdown, but Court Pentecost slides over and jars the ball loose. However, QND has a multitude of weapons. Here's a five-yard run to the end zone by Ivan Hun. The two-point conversion puts Quincy up 22-zip. Things not going Lincoln's way. Here's an apparent offside by QND, but no whistle sounded. However, it worked out for LCHS as Johnston ran for a first down. Just before the end of the quarter, it's Hun again for Quincy Notre Dame. QND leads 28-0 at the half. We're not sure what happened at halftime. Perhaps it was an inspirational speech from the LCHS coaching staff, but whatever it was, Lincoln came out like a team on a mission to start the third quarter. Kyle Keeler opens the period with a long kickoff return for the Railers. Then it's Peyton Bunner for a 12-yard run for LCHS. Then it's deja vu all over again as Bunner carries the ball for another 11 yards. Three plays later, it's Bunner once more. He scores on this touchdown run to get Lincoln on the scoreboard, cutting the QND lead to 28-6. Then it's time for the Lincoln defense to shine. On the first play after the ensuing kickoff, Lincoln's Aiden Fry gets the quarterback sack and knocks the ball loose in the process. Alex Schmidt recovers for Lincoln, and LCHS is in business. Unfortunately, Lincoln couldn't move the ball and gave possession back to QND. The Lincoln defense continued to perform. Here's Bunner making a nice tackle. But Quincy Notre Dame is ranked number three for a reason, and the Raiders showed why. Here's Oliver Triplett scoring on a 21-yard pass play to put Quincy Notre Dame up 34-6. Lincoln continued to battle, however. Here's Gabe Smith with a nice cut and run for a first down. A little later, Johnston hooks up with Bunner on another pass play for the rail splitters. Moving on to the fourth quarter, Johnston hits Gabe Smith on a 26-yard touchdown pass play. That makes the score QND 34, Lincoln 12. Quincy Notre Dame would go on to tack on 20 more points in the final period. Lincoln comes up on the short end of the score with the final being 54 to 12. Although he obviously would have preferred getting the win, Lincoln head coach Matt Selkowski said he knew the rail splitters would have their hands full against Quincy Notre Dame. Their offense and defensive line is really good. You know, they, they get off the ball really well and they, they slant really well and they, you know, they do a really good job getting in the opponent's backfield. And, um, you know, so our line had to match, you know, the physicality that they played with and uh, we just didn't, didn't, you know, we weren't able to do that. And obviously a really good football team, Quincy Notre Dame. Um, you know, the things that they do really well is just a really, you know, not a good matchup for us. Uh, and, you know, they, you know, took advantage of that. And, um, you know, it's a really, really good football team. Um, and we just got to keep getting better and, you know, give ourselves a shot, you know, here in week nine. The loss drops Lincoln's overall record to 4-4 four and four with one game remaining in the season. If Lincoln is to be playoff eligible again this season, the rail splitters will have to beat Jacksonville on October 25th on Lincoln's senior night in a 7 p.m. game. Last season, the rail splitters beat Jacksonville 41-28 to earn their fifth win and make Lincoln playoff eligible for the first time since 1984. Silkowski said, despite the loss to Quincy Notre Dame, he's pleased with his rail splitter team's frame of mind heading into the season finale. Kids played really hard and just really happy with the attitude. And, you know, again, they, you know, the kids played well and, um, you know, there's no finger pointing going on. You know, they stayed together as a team, and, you know, I think that's really important. LCHS hosts Jacksonville in the final regular season game for both schools Friday, October 25th on senior night for the Rail Splitter. The opening kickoff at Hanlon Field is scheduled for 7 p.m.